The psalmist had an interesting observation regarding the state of the righteous and how they are blessed by God. He said, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. Now, this is not to be interpreted as an absolute statement. There may be times when godly people are in such dire straits that they have no other option than to beg. Lazarus was one example of this. We know that he was righteous because when he died, he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom, and there he enjoyed a place of paradise. Yet during his life, he was a poor man, covered in sores, and longed to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. After he died, because he was righteous, he was comforted in a place of paradise. So, although there are exceptions, generally speaking, those who are righteous will be far less likely to have to beg than others. Even now, when God is no longer operating miraculously as he was during Bible times, the psalmist words are still generally true. Well, why is that? There are several reasons that we can find in the scriptures that explain why the righteous in general, do not beg. First and foremost, it is because God richly blesses us. Paul told Timothy that God richly blesses us with all things to enjoy in 1 Timothy 6.17. And James wrote, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. And as Paul explained to the residents of Lystra, God created a self-sustaining world with rains from heaven and fruitful seasons which are able to satisfy our hearts with food and gladness. However, even though these blessings have been given in abundance, it is possible to squander them. The prodigal son in Jesus' parable did this. After receiving half of his father's wealth, he squandered his estate with loose living and spent everything and then became impoverished. He, of course, was not living righteously. Those who are righteous will not only receive God's blessings, which all men do in some degree, they will also follow the instructions and principles that are found in God's Word. God's Word contains certain instructions and principles that, if followed, will help keep us from being in a position where we are needing to beg. So we're going to notice some things that the righteous will be and will do that will help keep them from needing to beg from others. Number one, the righteous will be hard working. The wise man said, laziness casts into a deep sleep and an idle man will suffer hunger. He also said that the slugger does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. If someone refuses to work, he can expect to find himself in a position of poverty and needing to beg from others in order to survive. The righteous man, however, will be hard working in order to provide for himself. Paul gave this instruction to the brethren in Thessalonica. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to attend to your own business, and work with your hands, just as we commanded you, so that you will behave properly toward outsiders and not be in any need. Number two, the righteous will be good stewards. We mentioned the prodigal son earlier. Before he came to his senses, this young man squandered everything that he had with loose living. In another parable that Jesus gave, the parable of the talents, Jesus criticized the one talent man for not using the resources that he was given wisely. The wise man said in the book of Proverbs, Know well the condition of your flocks and pay attention to your herds. He was talking about the principle of stewardship. The lesson for us is that we should not neglect the blessings that God has given us, but instead use them properly. And number three, the righteous will be content. Many people today beg, whether from their parents or their friends or strangers or even the government, not because they are truly in need, but because they don't have what they want. We need to have the attitude of Paul who learned to be content in whatever circumstance he found himself in. Paul told Timothy, if we have food and covering with these, we should be content. Yet how many people cannot find contentment even though they possess far more than just their basic necessities? But those who are righteous will be content with this, even if others may be blessed with far more than they have of this world's goods they will be content with what God has blessed them with. And number four, the righteous will associate with other righteous people. And this is important. 
a righteous man may work hard, may try to be a good steward, may have contentment, and still, due to circumstances beyond his control, find himself in need of help from others. Well, those who are righteous, generally speaking, will have others to whom they can turn because they have placed a priority on developing and maintaining relationships with their family and also their brethren in Christ. When one associates himself with righteous people, he is associating with those who are generous and ready to share, as 1 Timothy 6 and verse 18 says. And he will be around people who seek to do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So God is not going to miraculously provide food and clothing and shelter to those who serve him today. Yet Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. If we put spiritual things first, trust in God and do what we are capable of doing, we will be far better off than one who rejects God and is unwilling to work.